Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us once again for the Falcon Heavy webcast of the Jupiter 3 mission. I'm Ronnie Foreman, and I'm joining you to follow our Falcon Heavy rocket liftoff from Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. If you've been following along, you know that we stood down from Wednesday's launch attempt with an abort called around the T minus one minute mark. This was due to a valve that stuck open on one of the side boosters, preventing us from performing pressurization of a rocket component. We replaced the valve and checkouts were successful. So it looks like we are good to go today as long as the weather cooperates with us. So our team is working towards an on-time liftoff of 11.04 p.m. Eastern. Today's mission is for our customer Echo Star and their Hughes Network Systems Division and will mark SpaceX's third Falcon Heavy mission this year and sixth operational Falcon Heavy mission overall. And if you've been following along, this is also our second mission in less than 24 hours. Late last night or early this morning, depending on where you're watching from, we were fortunate enough to find some good weather down in Florida and launched our 50th mission so far of 2023. We had liftoff at 12.01 a.m. Eastern Time from our neighboring pad, Space Launch Complex 40. Back on 39A tonight with that great view you have on your screen, we have the Hughes Jupiter 3 Echo Star 24, or Jupiter 3 for short, on board the second stage. Jupiter 3 was built by Maxar and will be the largest commercial communication satellite ever to launch into geostationary orbit, weighing over nine tons. Once operational, Jupiter 3 will help meet demand for HughesNet satellite internet in rural areas of the United States and Latin America, as well as demand for Explore service for rural customers in Canada. Now, as a quick note, payload deployment for Jupiter 3 is scheduled to occur after three second stage engine burns and will take place around the T plus three hour and 30 minute mark. So hopefully you'll stick with us. Now above the second stage is where our payload is safely enclosed inside of our carbon composite payload fairing halves. The fairing protects the payload from aerothermal loads, heating and contamination during ascent. Once we reach the vacuum of space though, the fairing isn't needed anymore, so we'll jettison the fairing halves as the second stage continues on its journey to orbit. Both fairing halves supporting today's mission are also flight proven just like our side boosters, with one half flying for its fifth time and the other for its sixth. We will be attempting to recover the fairing halves again today as well with our recovery vessel, Doug. And now with just about T minus eight minutes and counting, here's a little bit more on our customer and our payload. For over half a century, we've been on a journey to connect people, enterprises, and things around the world. Innovation runs deep in our veins, from developing the two-way VSAT in the 1980s, to inventing satellite internet in the 1990s, to launching the first modern era telecommunication satellite in the 2000s. We've tackled the biggest connectivity challenges and applied our engineering excellence to uncover innovative ways to connect the unconnected. Since the launch of the first Hughes High Throughput Satellite, we have engineered some of the highest capacity broadband satellites in the world. And now, our latest and greatest innovation launches a new era of connectivity. Jupiter 3, the world's largest commercial communication satellite. 26 feet tall when stowed, it boasts 14 solar panels unfurled. This massive satellite was purpose-built and engineered like no satellite before. Hundreds of team members have devoted countless hours to bring Jupiter 3 to life. The highly anticipated next-generation ultra-high-density satellite doubles the size of the Hughes Jupiter fleet and brings total throughput to more than one terabit per second, enabling more capacity, better service, and faster speeds. With 300 highly concentrated spot beams, Jupiter 3 expands our reach to nearly 80% of the population across North and South America. The engineering ingenuity built into Jupiter 3 will expand the connected experience. For the family in Ohio, streaming movies on a Friday night. For the student in Mexico, expanding her horizons with access to technology and educational tools. For the farmer in rural Idaho, monitoring the weather each day to manage his crops. 
For the executive, flying from New York to Los Angeles, holding a meeting over first-class Wi-Fi in the sky. For the senior in Montana, consulting with his doctor by telehealth. For the ranger at a national park, coordinating in real time with emergency responders. For the mango grower in Brazil, expanding her family business nationwide and internationally. For the entrepreneur in Ecuador, promoting his business and taking customer orders. For the grandmother in Mississippi, meeting her new grandchild by video chat. All this and more as Jupiter 3 launches a new era of Join us. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition, engine full power, and lift off. The Falcon Heavy, go Falcon 9, go Falcon Heavy, go Echo Star. Stage one, chamber pressure is nominal. We are just over 30 seconds into flight under the power of over 5 million pounds of thrust and Falcon Heavy is on its way to space. Right now, we're throttling down in preparation for max Q, which is, of course, the moment of key. Power and telemetry nominal. Call outs there that power and telemetry are both looking good for Falcon Heavy. Again, what we're preparing for next is max Q, which is the peak mechanical stress on the rocket. So that is a critical Falcon is supersonic. critical flight milestone for us today. And with that supersonic call out, we know that Falcon Heavy is moving faster than the speed of sound. There we've passed through max Q. So now the engines are throttling up. Everything's looking good with the stage one trajectory, which is great news. Our side boosters are throttled all the way up right now, but the center core is operating a reduced power. We'll gradually begin reducing thrust from the side boosters to decrease forces on the vehicle structure as we approach our next major flight event, BICO. BICO, which stands for booster engine cutoff, is expected at about two and a half minutes into flight. That's where we'll shut down the engines on the side boosters. And then following BICO, the side boosters will separate away from the center core and begin their trip back to Earth. The center core engines will then ramp up to full power and burn for approximately another minute, while the side boosters execute their boost back burns simultaneously. Incredible views of Falcon Heavy right now. And as a reminder, although we are not attempting to recover our center core due to performance today, we will be attempting to land those two side boosters on landing zones one and two, so we'll have great views for you on the right-hand side of your screen. Side booster separation confirmed. Side core separation. There, we've had confirmation of side core separation there. And shortly, those side boosters are going to begin the first of three burns prior booster to landing back, startup. back on land. There's the call out that we've had boost back begin. We're gonna have several things happen in quick succession here. So some of the things we're looking for are Miko on our main engine, and then those two entry and landing burns of the side boosters. On your screen right now, we have views, views of both of those side boosters on their way back to Earth. There we go over on the side right there. Following main engine cutoff of the center core, we are looking for stage separation of the center core and the second stage, and then SES-1, or second engine start one, for the MVAC engine on board stage two. 
Shortly after that, we will also have ferrying separation. So let's keep an eye on all, ferry, all of those events happening back to back here in just a couple seconds. Booster, boost back, shut down. There's confirmation that the boost back burn on both side Pico. boosters has Stage completed. separation confirmed. Acquisition signal for Muta. Stage one, FTS has saved center core. Invest ignition. So you saw on your screen there, we had successful boost back burn on the side boosters, main engine cutoff on our center core, stage separation, and that beautiful view means that we have had second engine start one. That will wrap it up. Fairing separation confirmed. That wraps it up for our center core and our fairing halves tonight. So while stage two now continues on its journey to space, those fairing halves are currently falling back to Earth. All vehicles are following nominal trajectories. With that, we know both vehicles, the center core and stage two, are on nominal trajectories. And of course, we're going to try to uh, recover those fairing halves again tonight using our recovery vessel, Doug. Side booster landing leg deploy. Side booster landing confirmed. That is absolutely incredible, and as you can see, our team is thrilled. Stage two, FPS has saved. With that, we have successfully landed uh, both Falcon Heavy side boosters on landing zones one and two. That marks the 211th and 212th overall successful landing of an orbital class rocket. Payload deploy confirmed. There is that confirmation from Mission Control, and obviously you can see on your screen that we have had successful deployment of Jupiter-3. With that, we will bring our mission coverage to a close.